Hi guys, welcome back to this page that I have here on the website youtube.com. Most people would call it like a YouTube channel, but I don't really consider myself like a YouTuber. I just make videos and I post them twice a week and I make some money from them. I just got lucky, like some people just happen to follow me and like I just happen to like do it often for a living, but like, I don't know, it's just like a hobby that I like do for fun. Cause like, I don't, I don't know, it's like just fun. I know we all do it. We all do it. If you're clicking on this video and you're watching me right now, you're probably pretty familiar. If you clicked on this video, you're probably guilty of having imposter syndrome. What is imposter syndrome? You might be wondering. You might have just heard the term and be like, that sounds like me and then decided to look it up. You might have been very familiarized with it or you might literally just like not know what the fuck it is and ended up clicking on this because you thought it was an Among Us video. <laughs> Either way, you're here for a reason. So imposter syndrome, to put it simply, someone that I watched a TED talk on referred to it in the best and easiest way. It's like having a shitty best friend in your head at all times. Having that toxic friend that's always putting you down and making you feel like your achievements aren't worth shit. If you have imposter syndrome, some phrases that might feel familiar to you are, I feel like a fraud. What am I even doing here? Am I even qualified to do this? Do I even know what I'm doing? In situations that you're perfectly qualified and capable to handle. Before I even get into it, I wanna give you the perfect example of someone who has imposter syndrome. Me. I have issues. I have some serious issues. I have a very hard time owning what I do. And I do a lot. I'm pretty cool and I just have the hardest time like just coming to terms with that and realize I'm like, okay, you know what? You did some shit in your life, Ashley. I'm a YouTuber, I'm an author, I'm a business owner. Whew, feels weird saying all those things. I'm not used to that. I do things online and I make money off it and that's how I pay my bills. I have a published book that's available nationwide online, Amazon, Target in stores, Barnes and Noble, Indigo, ever you can really buy books. My book is there, which is crazy. I have a YouTube channel with almost 200,000 subscribers and then I have this one that I'm currently growing with 5,000 subscribers. I have a website called zodiacaven.com where I design and sell merchandise and apparel and I make some money off of that and I work with big brands and I do some shit, I guess. <laughs> but the funny thing about me is that up until a week ago, if you ask me what I do, <laughs> this is what it would sound like. So how long have you been driving Uber? I would say like two years probably. Yeah, yeah. pays the bills, you know. Okay, nice, nice. What about you? What do you do? I mean, I do like a few things, but mostly I guess I'm like a digital creator. And I guess you could say like I write a bit. Cool. You write like articles online or something? Oh no, like I create content online. What kind of content? Oh, like online, online videos and stuff. <laughs> oh, okay, like YouTube videos? I thought you just said you, you wrote. Yeah, 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 YouTube, YouTube, yeah. But like, I mean, I also, I, I wrote a book. No way, oh my God, I love YouTube. And like, what about the book? Is that like published or something? Yeah, yeah, it's published. Why didn't you say that? You should be proud, that's really cool. Thank you. <laughs> that's now. That's me feeling overly cocky. I'm like, oh my God, am I bragging? Like, I feel like I'm like, lying or bragging or just trying to impress people by saying these things when in actuality that's just my reality but if you ask me two years ago what i did i was working a part-time job and i was going to school as well and i was doing all these things on the side i was writing my book at the time i was still a youtuber verified making money like all that stuff over 100k like i had a pretty good life um but if you ask me what i did <laughs> you'd have no idea this is what it would sound like. That panel was so good. Honestly, I feel so inspired to create after this event. It's not even funny. Right? It was so good. I took so many freaking notes. <laughs> what do you do? Well, I mean, I'm a photographer, obviously. So many different things should be But also, I was really into like, you know, like old filmmaking. Okay, but like, I'm a very creative person overall. Sorry, I just went off on the whole rant. <laughs> But um, yeah, what do you do? I work at Rogers. I sell like phones and stuff and I go to school. Oh, okay, nice. What school do you go to? Oh, I go to York University. That's cool. I know a friend that went there. Um, I heard it's a good school. 
but um yeah that's good i hope everything goes well for you it was nice meeting you um i guess i'll see you around <laughs> but yeah take care okay take care thank you oh my god i did it again i wanted to be humble and i missed an opportunity to tell her what i do i could just i could just tell her i do youtube and i mean i Oh uh, shit, she's like really walking away now. She's really far. Okay, okay. Um, wow. Wow, that could have been a really, really good partnership, networking opportunity, friendship, potential business partner. But I wanted to tell her that I work at Rogers and I go to school. I hate my job and I hate my school. Why did I do that? Why didn't I just tell her what I do? I'm, I'm sick of myself. In fact, it was so bad that I hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube and my parents didn't even know that I had a YouTube channel. They were wondering how I was making all this money going to work once a week for five hours. They didn't know anything about anything because I felt like, why would I tell them if I'm not successful yet? Why would I tell them if I haven't really decided I want to do this yet? It was the most ridiculous thing ever and <sighs> let's talk about it. So imposter syndrome, let's put the glasses back on because now I'm ready to teach. So let's talk about some feelings that are associated with imposter syndrome. If you think you have it, you probably will resonate with some of these feelings. Perfectionism, fear of failure, self-doubt, and anxiety. When you have imposter syndrome, you constantly feel like you're not good enough, that you have something to prove, so the perfectionism really kicks in, trust me. There's usually some anxiety surrounding everything that you do because you feel like there's like this audience that's waiting for you to fuck up when in reality nobody really gives a shit about what you're doing. You tend to tell yourself that there's things that you don't deserve or that you just got lucky for. I remember when I signed my book deal and people asked me like, how did it happen? How did you get published? I've been writing a book for three years and I don't even know where to start. Or I've seen people be an author for 10 years and they still don't get a book deal. And they're like, how did you get your book deal? And I'd be like, Honestly, I just got lucky. Like, it just fell in my lap. I don't know, I guess it just pays off to be on the internet. No, no! There's a reason why Mango Publishing chose you, Ashley. There's a reason why they said, hey, we really like this girl on YouTube. We really think she has a great perspective on Zodiac Science. We really think she's great with self-help content. She would be a great author. There's so many other astrology people on YouTube, but they chose me, and that means something. Not only did they chose me, it means that I worked my ass off for three years to build a brand on YouTube that I was proud of. I worked my ass off for three years to research things that I could speak about on the internet and teach. And I also brought a refreshing new perspective to the topics that I was discussing. I was different and I put work into being this person. It's not like I just posted a video and like, oh, got lucky. Like I put work in and I deserve to own that. And I don't want to make this video about me, but I'm trying to just give you examples on like, Hey, like sometimes you might feel like you just got lucky by getting that job or you just got lucky by getting accepted into this program or no, there's a reason why you did. There is, you deserve it, own it. These thoughts come from limiting beliefs. Limiting beliefs are all in your head. Some examples of limiting beliefs would be like, oh, I'll never get that job. There's no point in applying. <sighs> they only accept 50 students in the film program per year. There's literally no reason for me to even apply. My shit's not good enough. Oh, I wanna be a model, but like, I'm not tall enough, so why bother? No, there are successful models that are 5'2". There are people in the film program that aren't that good, and they're <laughs> not saying you're not that good. And there are people that will go after that job, and you probably could have gotten it over them, but because you didn't apply, now they're gonna get it. Limiting beliefs, will do nothing for you. Even when you do achieve something, you're constantly gonna ask yourself, did I earn this or am I just lucky? People with imposter syndrome devote their entire life to feeling they're competent and that's not okay because you're already enough, you're already good enough. There's so many different ways in which this can affect us, even down to small things like being in a room full of successful people and being just as successful as them but feeling like you don't belong there at all. For example, if let's say you're a model and you just got signed two months ago, you walk into a room full of models and you just feel like a fraud, you feel fake, you feel like, oh my God, I'm not even a model. Like, oh my God, I don't know anything. Oh my, did you not get signed? Did you not sign that contract to elite models and decide that this is your career? Did you not do multiple paid shoots? Did you not learn how to be comfortable in front of a camera? Did you not get featured in that campaign by Nike? 
then you're a model. Maybe these girls have more experience. Maybe they have more years on you, but you're still a model and they're still a model. And they were a model when they were in the industry for two weeks and you're a model and you're in the industry for two months. It is what it is. Own your shit and understand that you belong to be in that room. Don't feed into the criticism of that toxic best friend living inside of your head. Do not feed into her hating on you and being like, what are you doing here? It's not real. For years, people would ask me what I do for a living and I'd be like, I work at Rogers. Yeah, I worked at Rogers, but that wasn't my life. That wasn't my career. That wasn't what I did. I had no interest in it. I hated it. I was there five hours a week making like $108 per paycheck. I didn't work at Rogers. I was a YouTuber and an author and a business owner. And I probably stopped myself from opportunities and networking by not telling people that. I was the type of person that I was in a room full of creative people and they'd be talking about everything that they do and I would sit there and be like, I work at Rogers. And then where's the conversation gonna go? Nowhere, what are they gonna say? Oh, well, how's the new iPhone 11 Pro? No, they don't care about that. They're creative people. They wanna hear about my creative endeavors, but I wasn't giving them that. I remember I'd be meeting so many people and it was to the point that my boyfriend had to tell people, she's a YouTuber, she's a YouTuber, she's a YouTuber. And they'd be like, why didn't you tell me that? And then I felt stupid because I didn't have a response. Why didn't I tell them that? That's what I do. Why didn't I tell them that? Why aren't you telling people what you do? Why aren't you telling people how great you are? Why aren't you telling people that you deserve to be here and that you belong in this room and that you are capable of doing what it is that you're doing? Why aren't you? Ask yourself that because I did not have an answer for that question. Trust me, I was sitting there like, oh, oh, um, oh, I don't know. Like, I'm just, I'm just modest. No, bitch, you're not modest. You have imposter syndrome. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know what came over me. So if you're wondering where imposter syndrome comes from, a couple of things. The main factor could be that you probably grew up in an overly critical household. So if you're someone that grew up with very strict parents who were never satisfied with what you do, you come home, you say, oh my God, dad, I got an A. You didn't get an A plus, why didn't you get an A plus? Oh my God, dad, guess what? I'm the vice president of the student council. Why aren't you the president? Things like that. When you were raised in an environment where you felt like you could never live up to people's expectations, you feel like all of your accomplishments are kind of undermined and there's no point in even telling people because no one's gonna be satisfied or impressed with what it is that you do. So you're like, hmm, may as well keep this one to myself. When you feel pressured to achieve, you're not gonna wanna talk about anything other than when you achieve. But the problem is, what is your standard of achieving? Because if you have a standard of achieving that's like infinite, but you're doing good shit, you're never gonna be able to stop and acknowledge what you're doing and what you're achieving because your standard is so high. That's why in your mind, you feel like you aren't achieving anything. That's why I felt like my book fell into my lap. It didn't, I worked hard, period. When you have constant criticism, imposter syndrome is a response to that trauma. So how do you combat imposter syndrome? You tell yourself you are that bitch every single day. Okay, there's more to it, but there's a few ways to do it. Affirmations are really, really helpful. Affirmations remind yourself of who you are and what you have to offer. If you want some good affirmations, I would write these down and say them in the mirror multiple times a day. You might feel ridiculous. You might feel like a fraud. You might feel corny. Just keep doing it, trust me. Just keep, keep, keep doing it. Write these down, seriously, I'm not joking. I am enough, my effort is enough, my love is enough. I am successful. I am confident and self-assured. I am great. Everything I desire is already within me. I deserve all of the abundance that is coming my way. I make the most out of the opportunities presented to me. I deserve success. I celebrate all my wins. Another way to combat imposter syndrome is to recognize the people around you that are overly critical of everything that you do. And then decide that what they have to say doesn't matter. Even if it's your mom, even if it's your dad, even if it's your BFF or your sister, if they are that person in your ear that's overly critical, what they say doesn't matter. The only person that can be critical is you and God. Tell them your wins, but just know that whatever they say to you doesn't matter. But start getting used to telling people about your wins, about what's going on in your life. When you get that grade, if it's an A+, plus, go and tell them it's an A+. Plus. If it's an A, tell them it's an A. If it's a C, tell them it's a C. And start getting used to not giving a shit on what they have to say back to you. Because it doesn't matter. Talk to your friends about what you're going through and let them remind you about who the fuck you are. Let them know you're battling with this. Send them this video, tell them, hey, I have this. Just so you know, if you ever hear me putting myself down or undermining my success or not claiming what I do, put me in check. Someone like my boyfriend, I'm telling you, he would be 
oh my god, in everyone's face, like, my girlfriend's a YouTuber, she does this, she has over 150,000, and they'd be like, oh my god, stop, 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 please, 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 stop, stop, stop. I would get so embarrassed. Get people like him, okay? It helps, because the more you're put in that awkward, uncomfortable situation, the more you'll be comfortable with just a regular conversation about, hey, what do you do? I'm a YouTuber, I'm a singer, I'm a painter, I'm an actor, I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm a this, I'm a that. Imposter syndrome can literally stop you from opportunities if you let it go too far. If you're somebody that needs to be out there flaunting what you do, but you decide that you wanna just be shy and modest about it, you're really screwing yourself over. Imposter syndrome is not modesty, it's not being humble. It's just straight up bad for you, period. It's very easy to just say that, oh, I'm a humble person, you know, but it's just not that. It's just one of those things that it's only hurting you. If you tell someone about what you do and they take it as bragging, that's a them problem. That is not a you problem. Everyone's perception of reality is based off of their own experiences and what they go through. If they're threatened or jealous of what you do and you, they feel like you're bragging, it's because they're not happy with what they do. And it's because they have a problem with themselves and they're projecting that onto you. So that has nothing to do with you. If that's how they view you, it is what it is. The next time you think that you achieve something because of luck, because of coincidence, because of, oh wow, it just happened this way, Mm -mm. Ask yourself what led you here. You figure out your journey to what got you to all your successes. Start thinking about all your wins in your life and ask yourself what led me here. And you're gonna realize it wasn't luck. It was hard work, it was dedication. If you have a problem with acknowledging when you're winning, when you're successful, whatever, ask people about your performance. If you don't know if you're doing good at your job, go to your boss and ask them, hey, how am I doing? If they tell you that you're doing amazing, maybe it's something you wouldn't have realized if you didn't ask. Become self-aware and use self-awareness to your advantage because the more you own it, the more you're aware of how amazing you are, the more and more imposter syndrome will seem like a joke to you. You're gonna realize like, I don't need to be humble. Anyways, I hope that helped you guys. I hope that you understand imposter syndrome a little better now and that you found some ways to cope with it and combat it because honestly, it is the devil. I really hope I helped you in some way. And if there's anything you wanna know more about this topic, let me know. I did a lot of research on it. I just tried to condense it all into this video. But with that being said, thanks for showing up to my video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.